Even after you say for well, emergencies, my dear, another emergency in the emergency will find you again. The journey that you are about to embark on, you go and shout. And it's not even a joke. You are totally crying. I'm not doing anything wrong. It's just adulting, adulting. In total, the amount that I pay for my bills. Hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is caroline if you don't know who i am in today's video as you can tell by the title i'll be sharing some tips and tricks to consider before you move out of your parents house especially if you're in the uk so if it's a kind of video that you want to watch stick and stay i'll give you a little background story i recently moved out of my dad's house it's been about two months since i moved out this tips is based on my experience and the things that i was actively researching on so i've combined everything into one video that you guys will find it easy they are considering moving out this is the video that you want to watch so i have my phone with me and i've written a note so that i don't forget anything because you see me looking down there that's the main reason this video is divided into five parts which is the things that i did before i moved out things i did after i moved out the pros and cons i'll give you an estimate of how much you have to budget before you consider moving out because things ain't cheap all right all right the things that you need to do before you consider moving out is have a job that brings a steady income from my experience i needed five weeks rent a holding fee if you don't have a steady income how are you going to afford all these things and the second point is you have to have a good credit score here in the uk before you accept your application what they have to check your credit score if your credit score is low i don't know the lowest that you can go that they want to accept you but if your credit score is low i don't think they'll allow you to rent their properties because they have to make sure you can pay the money and then you won't be a burden on them you have to have references from job places or advice for you to start building it now you have to be mindful because credit score if you're not careful you might run into debt and we, we don't want that you have to be strategic about it do your research on how you have to build your credit score you can check out this video i explain into details what credit score is and how you can build it that you have to consider is you have to start buying your essentials i don't know who told me to do this but it helped me so much okay don't do that that's so good immediately you decide that i want to move out start buying all the basic essentials that you need for your apartment your cooking utensils your blenders your rice cooker if you don't have a bed start buying your bed your furniture not your furniture but buy all the essentials that you need to survive on like for example you need a bed you need towels beshi those things that you cannot survive without start buying them in bed when you wait till last minute you will struggle when you start buying things early it gives you the opportunity to compare prices the probability of you not comparing prices is very high you have all the time in the world to compare prices check the price on amazon you check the price on ebay you check the price on aliexpress and if it's within your budget you can buy it if that makes sense other than you just wait until last minute and you're like oh my god i actually need best sheet and then you just go to Primark and then there's a selling for 30 pounds and you go and buy it because you desperately need it. But if you had started buying it early, you save so much money. Anything that you have to do to save money, you want to do that. Trust me, because the journey that you're about to embark on, you can't be going out there spending your money left, right, center like that. Okay? Okay. Now that you have a steady income, your credit score is in check, you started buying your essentials and comparing prices, then you start looking for apartments. There are so many apps, especially in the UK, that you can apartment hands over there. I'll leave links of it in the description box so that you can check it out. So there are apps like Zoopla, Rightmove. I found my apartment on Rightmove. But let me tell you a little secret. When you are looking for apartments, if you can research during the evening there are so many deals during the midnight and the nights by morning now somebody has already booked a viewing and then you might not get it so that's a little trick most of the cheap apartments you have to start looking for during the nights if you want affordable and a very good deal 
you're welcome and don't rush okay don't forget that you're about to live in this apartment for the next at least six months and to find somewhere that you'll be comfortable with no matter how desperate you are take your time consider your budget and look for someone that will feel very comfortable in it because at the end of the day every month you'll be paying the bills you want to pay money that you are okay spending when i said actively searching i use about three months to find it and it can be frustrating going for viewing upon viewing and all of that but take your time okay you find the perfect apartment for you within your budget range and don't rush it that brings me to the next point which is you have to physically go for viewing if you cannot make it for the viewing let somebody you trust go for viewing for you if you go with what you've seen on the website or the pictures on the website you can go and share your breakfast. Next thing is within your budget. When you start going for these viewing, these agents try to lick your brain and they make you think, so oh, this is the best option that you can ever get. You must have a budget and stick to it because the bills that are coming in the near future, if you go and do yourself a system, you cry. Next point is when you finally find a place that you like. Pay a holding fee as soon as possible, especially in this UK. You've seen an apartment, you're like, oh, I'm going to think about it. Share. Who has your time to wait for you to think about it? There are so many people looking for apartments. People are always looking for apartments and you think they'll wait for you to go and think about it. And the holding fee is something that is going to secure the apartment so that if anybody comes around, they're not going to give it to anybody. I think they're going to close the viewing immediately you pay the holding fee so if you really like the apartment if you enter the house and you know that like, mm, i can see myself living here just pay the holding fee and then you will not regret it so that you will not lose the apartment because the number of apartments is i lost because i wanted to go and think about by the end of the day i like this place so yeah it's fine <laughs> So the next thing I want to talk about is when you sign the contract, when you finally have the apartment, take your time and read the contract. And if there's anything that they have to amend, they amend it there and then, or you sign. But you don't want to sign something that you are not prepared for. If you don't understand anything in the contract, feel free to ask them questions. What does this mean? What do you mean by I have to do this or do that? Make sure you are start clear before you sign the contract. All right. <laughs> Let me move on to the next part of the video. That's you move out this is where i talk about the things that you're supposed to do to make you stay comfortable do your research about the bills about the cheapest and fastest wi-fi you can get you have to find the cheapest electricity company that you can associate yourself with because if you don't take care crap. and it's not even a joke you actually cry call the companies ask for discounts you can't Tell them that you cannot pay for it and then they'll try and meet you halfway. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was looking for Wi-Fi, I wanted to be with Sky and they told me that for what I wanted, I have to pay £35. Bruh. Can you believe I bargained with them and then now I'm paying £26. Even though it's just a little pounds off, tell them, oh, see, this is my budget. Like, if you don't... I'm gonna go to a different company. And the worst thing that they can say is, no, I'm so sorry, we do not offer such services at this particular point in time. And then you move on, at least you ask the Wi-Fi installation. You have to book an appointment for the installation. I think a month prior, 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 <laughs> month before you move in, else you'll be left in the apartment with no Wi-Fi or no internet. And then you don't want to do that. You know, if it's cast across, you have to ask them, so how long is it going to take for you to get that installed? Nobody wants to be living without a Wi-Fi. I don't know. <laughs> what else? The first few months. Oh my God. Oh my God. I've written the first few months, prepared to be shocked with unexpected expenses. Even after you say, for well, emergency is my dear. Another emergency in the emergency will find you again. <laughs> Prepare to be shocked. Mm. You are not doing anything wrong. It's just adulting, adulting. Psych yourself that there are so many uncertainties, especially financially, out of your budget. Prepare to be shocked <laughs> that when it happens, you don't cry and go back to printers. Don't worry, with time, you'll find a way to cut down costs. When you get it out, if the door starts slapping you left, try to set that. Nobody will tell you to stop spending less things. 
especially with electricity you have to be vigilant if you are not using the light in the bedroom turn it off they talking about that let me go and see if the bedroom light is off because first of all it requires us i hope i turned it off yes i did electricity if you are not careful eh the way it will fire like grab chat if you're not using the light turn it off if you're not using the socket turn the socket off if the boiler is not being used turn the boiler off else you end up paying unnecessary money that you have to pay it's not necessary to be paying all these things you can avoid this point i'm going to talk about is you have to set a direct debit so that all your bills will come out on the same day or so that you don't miss any payment if you miss a payment it can be a penalty and then you end up paying unnecessary penalties that you could have avoided so to be on the safer side set a direct debit that you may be on the first day of the every month everything is supposed to come out if you're self-organized help you and your entire help i've done the things that you have to do before and after you move out and now you are moving to the pros and cons of moving out i feel like this video is so long but stay with me it's gonna be worth it in the end it's not that much i'm almost done to divide it into the positive and the negative parts the positive part is it's so beautiful if you've not lived alone and people are saying it you'll be like oh we're there but it comes with so much peace nobody is disturbing your peace nobody is in your space my next life i come back the first thing that i'm doing when i turn 18 is to move out of my parents house i recommend it you get to experiment so many recipes because at the end of the day if it's not nice you are going to eat it alone unlike if you are living with somebody be careful with what you are cooking because if it's not nice somebody is going to eat it time around you get to experiment with so many recipes if it's not nice you take your l if it's nice you take your blue the number of things that i've experimented in this house <laughs> it's not like it's normal get to experiment with food if you love cooking and then the next point is you get to walk around the house naked mm, that's so nice you get obsessed with that part but i don't know if it's just me <laughs> if you are ocd it's worse because you want everything to be a particular way be good and bad at the same time but i like the obsession that comes with the apartment the thing is everything in the house is yours like when you look around every single thing is yours like every tiny bit is yours it's so fulfilling it lets you do everything at your own time eh? the number of times that i've woken up at 2 a.m to cook the number of times that i wake up at a random time to do a random activity to do everything according to your own time which is cool the last time i filmed a video at 3 a.m if i was with my dad i don't think i'll be able to do that not because i'm going to complain but everybody's asleep Cons of living alone is you are responsible for every tiny thing in this house from groceries to toiletries there are so many things that when you were in your parents house you didn't even think that your mom actually went to town to get by like liquid soap for instance responsible for every tiny detail it sucks but the way anything point is your work ethic because you do everything according to your own time if you don't take care you'll be so lazy because there's nobody to check you accounting to anyone no one is coming to knock on your door and ask you you're not gonna do your homework so if you are not disciplined enough you are going to stay in bed the whole day and nobody is going to tell you anything it can be a bad thing and a good thing at the same time i think overall you have to have self-discipline not you just launch in bed because nobody can actually tell you nothing and the next point is the paranoia that comes with living alone i don't know if it's just me but sometimes my overthinking brain in the middle of the night just if somebody comes into the house right now if you are living with somebody and god forbid something is happening there's a second person over there that can help you get to that situation but then you living alone especially as a woman or a lady i don't even want to say that but in general if something happens you are on your own then to be able to protect yourself so that's the pros and cons as part of the video is estimated amount of money that you have to set aside i'm not going to share how much i pay for my rent because it's not going to help you in any shape or form because it is different across the uk it depends on where you are living how much rent costs in london is definitely different from how much rent costs in leeds and i'm in leeds it depends if you want a fully finished or no finished i opted for partly finished apartment because as i do not have the capacity to go and buy a bed a chair a table what i can share is how much i pay for electricity bills cancel tax wi-fi my electricity bill is paid
pay as you go on an average i think you can pay a hundred pounds a month i try and spend 10 pounds in a week for electricity bill it's not realistic but i know that thing that i do that makes me spend that amount of money i started living here i was definitely paying more than that first month but then now i've put certain things in place that is making me cut down costs so i think now the least amount that i'm paying for electricity is 60 pounds in a month I pay 26 pounds a month for my Wi-Fi, 27 pounds for my water bill, 28 pounds for council tax. So in total, the amount that I pay for my bills, excluding rent, is 211 pounds. Definitely different for everybody. So you have to do your research. You have to know how to cut down costs. Else, you like I said, you end up spending money that you can definitely avoid spending. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the post notification that anytime I upload a new video, you'll be the first person to get notified. My Instagram is down below. And I'll see you in my next video.